Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and it's a joy to visit with you today. Sunday's scripture lesson comes from Mark 12, and I want to look at just verses 28 to 31 and reflect with them, reflect upon them with you today. That text reads, One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now, in Jesus' day, there were so many rules. And one of the great marks of a good teacher was that he could summarize them in a few words or sentence. And so Jesus, in that moment, takes all of the laws and boils them down into just two things. That we need to, number one, love God with all of our being. And two, that we need to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, these are not new teachings. The first and great commandment is a summation that comes directly from Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. And then the second commandment to love our neighbor comes directly from Leviticus 19, verse 18. But here's what's new. Jesus brings these two things and he puts them together. And he says that you can't talk about loving God on this hand without talking about loving your neighbor. I have often said in sermons and teaching in Bible study that, you know, your barometer, how how do you know how you're doing in loving God? Look at how you're doing in loving your neighbor. Jesus now, once and for all, forever links these two things together. Now, those are easy words to talk about, but how does that look in, in in our daily lives? Well, as we want to think about how do we love our neighbor, And we'll talk more about this on Sunday morning. But to love our neighbor, it it calls us from mere words and it calls us to to take action. Words alone will never be enough. So someone who's run out of gas saying, I'll I'll pray for you, really isn't nearly as helpful as taking them to get get some gas for their car. To love our neighbor will mean that we will sacrifice what we want to do in order that we can do something else for someone else. To love our neighbor means that there's no quit in us, even when it gets tough. It means that we're going to press on to do whatever it takes to help that neighbor. So I was thinking about this and getting ready to um, record this video. I was like, well, now, how does that get lived out? And what does that look like? Um, is there someone who really exemplifies that for me? And I kept thinking about my brother-in-law, Bill. Since my sister became sick and was diagnosed with cancer, Bill has become her caregiver. Do you know that caregivers are some of the most amazing people? They haven't been trained for those new responsibilities. They often never saw themselves doing something like that. And they're dealing with the physical, emotional, spiritual support of a loved one or dear friend. And I've seen Bill step up. He cares for all of their shopping, all of their errands. He helps around the house. He goes to every appointment with Teresa. He sits with Teresa during her treatments. He's made multiple trips with her to the ER. He spends time with her through many hospitalizations. He does some cooking and and cleaning and and on and on and on. And in each and everything that he does, he shows his love for Teresa. And in supporting her, helping her, and encouraging her, he shows his love for her. He has lost sleep. He's put his own plans on hold. And he sacrificed so much on her behalf. For me, he is that example of how we love our spouse, our neighbor, our friend, our coworker, or classmate. 
But you know what? Seriously, if you'll think about it, within your circle of family and friends, you have your own example of someone like Bill, someone that you could tell a similar story. You have seen it in the sacrifices uh, in, in the everyday life. You've seen it in the sacrifices of, of your children's school teachers, in the care provided by the healthcare professionals, certainly during this pandemic, we see those professionals going back in every day and continuing to care and give of themselves to help so many critically ill patients. We see it in the tender love of a mother for a sick child. And we see it in the patience of a coach teaching fundamentals and taking individuals and kind of weaving them into a, a cohesive team. My friends, publicly today, I thank Bill for all he does for my sister. But I'm also for his humble example that I hope will spur you and, and me into putting into practice Jesus' commandment to love our neighbor. I can assure you it's not easy. But when we step out in faith, we'll be able to do far more than we ever thought we could. I want Bill's example. I want the stories of folks that you know to encourage you to give it your best shot and to trust God for the rest. Amen. Well, there's some things that I want to lift up to you. Um, We've been talking about this a couple of times uh, previously, but I really want to thank you for your support of Wesley Preschool um, uh, through our Weiss for School program. Uh, Weiss presented us $400, and that program has resumed. Um, we uh, have linked uh, up our Weiss card uh, when we shop so that that can all benefit the Weiss uh, or the Wesley Preschool, and I want to encourage you to do that. Our school code is in the bulletin, or you can call the church office. I want to thank you ahead for supporting our school and providing much needed funding. Don't forget that Tuesday uh, is election day. Please get out and vote. Our next mom to mom gathering is Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And as these ladies gather for a good time of fellowship, uh, there's always dinner and child care provided at each gathering. Next Saturday, so that, that will be uh, the evening of the 6th of November. Uh, don't forget to turn your, clock, your clocks back. And that means we get to enjoy an extra hour of sleep. And finally, I, you know, it's a, it seems strange, but indeed uh, we are at that place. Uh, poinsettia orders are due by November 14th. See the bulletin and the newsletter for uh, additional details. Uh, order forms are in the bulletin newsletter and uh, in the lobby. Uh, we need them again by November 14th. Well, thank you for letting me uh, share some time with you. I uh, always enjoy uh, reflecting on the scriptures and thinking about how it applies to our lives and hope that it also uh, encourages and supports you in your faith journey. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, what a challenge Jesus gives us today in his word to love our neighbor. Real love calls us into action in ways we never anticipated. And it takes determination, sacrifice, and perseverance. Help us to move in action when we see a need. Lord, help us to, to turn to you for guidance when we're unsure, when we're unsure. And Lord, let us, when we, when we find our strength waning, trust that you will provide your strength to help us continue the, to continue the task. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you for visiting with me. We're going to do this again real soon. May the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.